What's going on guys, Dan Watson, and I'm gonna tell you something that I actually didn't even know existed until like a couple of weeks ago. So you probably heard of CapCut. I've actually been using the mobile app for probably like a year now to edit videos. My daughter uses it all the time, but I actually had no idea. They had a desktop version of the software with some really like pro end features. I can basically do just about anything and it's like five times faster to create edits. Now what's insane is that I actually started noticing the more I used it is that the built in and there's just a ton of like built in effects, transitions, you have music, sound effects, but on CapCut, they are actually useful. I find like programs like Premiere, they have transitions that maybe existed 20 years ago, but I would never use them for anything that I'm doing now. Whereas the ones in CapCut are just things that are relevant. They're things that you actually want to use but they still have those advanced things. So like masking, tracking, speed ramps, custom LUTs. I'm telling you, this is probably one of the easiest programs you've ever used. So, but yesterday I got a call that there was a brand new racetrack with some pretty insane cars on it. So we wanna go shoot that, get all that footage, load it into CapCut and try and create a pretty sick edit. So let's go. I actually, even for social media, I still shoot a lot of my stuff in horizontal. What you'll notice is that in CapCut, you actually don't need to decide in advance what you're doing. It's actually really easy to change, but you'll see it says 16 by nine right here. I can actually just click on this, move it to nine by 16, and that is it. Now I have a nine by 16. All I need to do is just scale up, even reframe it if I need to. So until a couple days ago, I had never actually used the desktop version of this software, which will show you just how easy it is to use when you see how good I am already. Now I hate editing on a mobile phone. Uh, basically I only do it if I shot it on a phone and then I'm basically just editing the clips that I recorded really quickly. Other than that, I prefer to edit on a desktop like always. So for me having this, this is my happy place. It is completely free and it is so easy to learn, which I wish I could say the same thing about like DaVinci Resolve because man, I am struggling to be able to use that one right now. But this should look and feel really at home compared to basically any other linear editor out there. So I'll kind of break down the interface. So basically on the left side, you have all of your assets that you can bring in right here. Uh, you can just click import or you can drag and drop right into there. And then you have just a ton of stuff. So you'll see we have audio, we have text, we have stickers, we have effects, we have transitions, we have filters, we have adjustment layers that we can do on there. More on that in a second. Plus we have our actual player right here. And if you just click on this, you can turn on all of your color wheels and all that kind of stuff on here as well. And then over on this right side, you have some information, but this is gonna get really powerful in a second. And then you have your timeline. And if you look at this timeline, it's actually much more advanced than you would think it would be for, I don't know what I thought would be like an entry level software, but it is really powerful and really not. Like you can do full scale edits in this. So let me show you exactly how it works. So I know I have a project that already exists, but we'll go ahead and import a couple clips like it was brand new. So I'll just take this clip right here, drag it into the timeline. Uh, we'll take this clip right here, drag it into the timeline. Here we go, I've got two clips right here. So two ways of basically editing this, I can just go to the start point right here. I can either do a blade tool, uh, which is actually right here, or you can just shortcut the blade tool and cut it and then I can just break off that piece or I can just trim it by sliding right here to the end of that. And then I can go to my next clip. Let's see, that's a good starting point right there. Let's see, we'll break it maybe right there. And then I have my two clips perfectly edited together and that is how simple it is to actually bring in your clips and edit them in the timeline. So next thing is I wanna get some music for this. And what's really cool is that 
all of your audio, obviously you can bring in any track that you want from outside of CapCut, but look at this. You can just click on audio and music and you have a list of just all of this music that is already ready for social media here. So you can look at what's trending. You can look at different sounds also, which we'll get into a little bit more, but you have sound effects right in here built into it, a pretty massive library. And this saves so much time. So obviously you can bring in whatever you want, but if you just want to go ahead and uh, add some, let's say uh, taking a photo right here, there's the clip. If I want to just add it in, boom, drag and drop. And now my sound effect is here. And again, you can search. So if I want to find something related to a car, I have all of that here. And literally you can just drag and drop it into the timeline and there you have it. So what I'm going to want to do here is start to make this amazing. So let's go ahead and add some transitions between these and look at this. So transitions, look at how many transitions are in this software. It is just absolutely insane. And when I say like, these are useful stuff, this then and now, that's a very popular thing right here. Uh, a lot of these blurs, color glitches, look just how many glitch and distortion effects there are. This is stuff that is popular on social media right now. All of these split transitions right here, zoom ins, uh, this is stuff that is useful. So I'm actually gonna keep it very simple for this because this is like a little bit more cinematic edit and we'll break down some cooler stuff in a minute. I'm gonna use these black fades and I'm gonna go ahead and just bring them in, drop them into place in between these two clips. That is it guys, I am adding transitions right here. If I wanna change the duration, you just click on the transition and boom, you got the duration actually, but this half second, that's probably gonna be good for me. So I can play that back, just see how that looks. And that looks great. Honestly, I am very, very happy with that right there. So I still want this to feel even more cinematic. So the next thing to do is add some black bars to kind of give it that feel. Look how easy this is right here. So I can actually go to my media, but I'm gonna go to this library and there's actually a few more elements in here that they just give you, I don't know, there's some random stuff in here for sure. But the three that are probably useful for you is this black, white, and then transparent background. I'm gonna go ahead and use this black. I'm gonna drag it right over my clips right here and it covers everything. But click on a clip and we're gonna get into this in a little bit. Look at all of these things that happen. So if you don't click on a clip, you see these details here, click on the clip and Look at all these things that happen. So one of the things is going to be your cutouts, but look, you have blend modes, all of that stuff is here. So click on cutouts, you have chroma options on here. I'm gonna use a mask. So all of these masks are also built into it. So this is really helpful. I'm gonna click on a film strip mask. I'm gonna go ahead and invert it. And there I have black bars just like that. You can add feathers, you can add all of this cool stuff. You have all of these preset shapes right here. So now I wanna add like a really cool opener. I'm gonna show you guys probably the most endless list of things that you can do in this program right here. Go ahead and go to effects. And this list right here, it just goes on forever. The amount of effects on this. And I'm again, a lot of this stuff is really cool, really useful stuff. And if you wanna preview it, you just make sure you're on a portion of your timeline, click on it, and it'll display exactly what it would look like with that effect on it. Really, really amazing things here. Now, again, look how long this list goes on. Some really, really insane stuff. Now at the top is gonna to be this trending section. So if you wanna just check out some things that are going on right now, Again, I see this edge glow going on all the time. These uh, these shake transitions are basically shaking your footage. That's big right there. Look at all these glitch effects as well. Now I'm gonna go into this opening. And again, these are very popular things that I'm seeing right in here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this horizontal opener. I'm gonna go to the beginning, click on this. And that's good. So I'm gonna actually just bring that in and it just opened up a brand new layer in there and we can watch it back. And now I have my opening exactly. I want this to start a little bit, actually and start where it is, but end a little bit earlier. I'm just gonna drag this over there. And now it should be perfect. And now I have my really awesome opener for this. So next up, we're gonna do some color grading things. And again, there's two ways of doing this. So one is that if you go to your clips individually, you can just click on it, 
you bring up this dialog box of all of these insane things that you can do right here. This is where you can just stabilize your footage. You can do chroma keying on here. It actually will auto chroma key if you have just a person in the frame, especially if you're on a really clean background. It's really cool. Those masks we use later or adjustments. And this is where all of your color is going to be right here. So if you want to just make some modifications to a clip, you can do it. And again, like custom LUTs, all of that is in here as well. You have a very familiar, easy to use uh, area to be able to do your basic color correction. You have HSL, you have curves. I'm talking all your curves are right here. And again, you have all of these color tools. Most of you are going to want to do something in this adjustment. So this allows you to basically do your own custom adjustment layer. And then now on this adjustment layer, you can do that same adjustment. So you can do all of your LUTs, all of your HSL, all of that is gonna be here and it will affect every clip that you put this over. Now, if I run across one clip and I'm like, oh, this one looks a little too uh, brighter. Actually, this one may be a little bit dimmer. I could just come into this one clip, click on it and maybe increase those highlights a little bit or increase the exposure. Now, obviously you can bring in custom LUTs. So if you have a particular look already, you can bring that in. Or if you go to the filters dialog box, you will see that there are a ton of different filters or looks built into this program. And one of the really cool ones is gonna be in this movies. They have a couple of different looks right here that look really awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull on this Black Panther look right here and you can see exactly what this does. We'll drag it out to the entire clip and you can preview it right here. You can click on it and adjust the strength. So maybe I like this, but just a little bit. Uh, maybe I wanna combine this with another look. We can drag that in and again, change just the strength of what this does. And now we have both of those together. And again, look, this is all playing back in real time with these 4K clips with all of these adjustments put on top of each other. So that's some pretty cool stuff right there, but it is nowhere near my favorite. So one of the things that I do all the time is gonna be speed ramp. So let's go over to these two clips that I brought over right here. Uh, they're a little long, so I'm gonna shorten them a little bit. Now what you would do is actually go to speed right here. You can change the speed right here if you want to. So I can just make it faster. You can see it shortens it. And then one of the things that you can do, which is the most powerful thing, go over to this curves right here. These are built in ready to go speed ramps. I use this bullet transition. I would typically have to customize this myself in Premiere or something like that to get this. It's here. So I can just click on it and automatically it applied the speed ramp. Go ahead and click on this. Automatically it applied the speed ramp. Now, if you wanna go in here and change it a little bit. So if I wanna bring uh, this point back and I can just click on this and see exactly what this looks like. And boom, we've got an awesome speed ramp in like a couple seconds in two clips right here. And it is really, really amazing. It's so much faster than anything I've ever done. And the results just look better. The other thing that I find really impressive is gonna be in the same dialog box, but go over to animations. This is where I said that there's almost more effects here. These are animations, but these are in animations. These are out animations. And these are these combo animations that basically affect your entire clip. Again, if you wanna see what these look like, you can just click on the clip, you can click on the animation. It'll show you, let me go ahead and delete this sound that I've got there. Uh, click on the animation and it'll show you exactly what it's going to look like. The one that I use all the time, I use these like zoom transitions, I use these shake transitions all the time. Uh, some of these like slide transitions, these are very popular as well. Let's go ahead and throw in like a little shake transition right at the beginning. You can change the duration right here, kind of keep it a little bit short to kind of go around with that speed ramp. And boom, you have that really cool. To me, it just adds like a little bit more to those speed ramps. And again, I don't do this for every clip, but if you're kind of moving between two very different clips and you have a really cool speed ramp, that kind of shake transition just adds a little bit to it. So obviously a cinematic edit like that is not what you see as much on like TikTok and Instagram reels and even YouTube shorts. However, I just wanna show you just how powerful this software is and the kind of stuff that you can do with it. 
Now, what's probably more common is gonna be videos like this. So again, like talking head style videos. And again, I could just go in here and change my aspect ratio to nine by 16. And now it's actually native for this project. Now, this is an upcoming video on how to select a lens. It will be going live on YouTube Shorts and Instagram on Reels. So if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and do that now. But one thing that is really powerful here that you would probably wanna do is text. Now, obviously, you can just add in text, but one thing that's really cool is that all of these effects are built in. If you go ahead and just add in a text group just like this, you can see that you have all of these preset styles, you have these bubble styles, you have effects that you can do that. All of that is right here. But what I'm gonna do is even better. I am going to auto caption this entire thing because I don't wanna write text for everything that I did. So let's click on auto caption create so here it is we have full populated text going over all the videos now right now it's kind of styleless it's just some text but one thing that's really cool is we can go over to this basic tab right here we can go ahead and click on a preset style uh, we can go ahead and change our font size to be a little bit larger and here we have something that is going to get your attention right here and i had this apply to all checks so all of my text boxes now have the exact same style fonts and sizing. So just like that, you can just click this one box right here and we don't have to edit these individually. Now, one thing you can do is add some animations. So I really like, uh, let's see, let's go with a typewriter effect. We'll go ahead and put that same effect on this one right here. And now we'll watch that back and you can see all of that going right there. And again, you can change the duration of this. So if you want that to take longer to type on, then you can go ahead and do that. And now you have text layers over all of your stuff. And literally in seconds, this did it all for you. So if you need to do any kind of captions, this is one of the best programs to be able to do it in. Now, here is another thing that you just, you can't do in other softwares, but you can do it in seconds in CapCut. So I'm gonna come over here and I have a clip right here, which is, I guess, a beauty style clip. And we'll go ahead and go to this enhance tab. Look how just easy this is. I'm gonna click on face. It's gonna find her face. And then just like this, you can do skin smoothing. I'm gonna overdo it just so you can see it on the web because I don't know how you can see it. But honestly, for me, like maybe 20 to 30 is all I would do, but we'll go ahead and just go to 100 so you can see the difference. Look at this, you can absolutely notice that difference. I don't know how it's masking it, but it is a perfect mask. It looks amazing. You can brighten skin tones right here. And you have all of these like, facial beauty modes, you can change the shape of the face, you can change eyes, nose, mouth, all kinds of stuff that I wouldn't normally touch. But honestly, I feel like I have barely scratched the surface of what this software can do. So I'll leave a link to download in the description, go check it out, it is completely free. And I've noticed that CapCut is doing updates like crazy. And every time there's just some awesome new feature that didn't exist before. And again, relevant stuff that that's actually useful for the type of things that I would be creating, especially for like short form content for TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, all that kind of stuff. So definitely go check this out. Appreciate the like if this was helpful at all. Ton of new stuff coming up. Actually, I just released the Sony ZV-E1 review today. So I'm really stoked about that one. So check out the other videos, like, subscribe. Hope you guys are doing amazing and I'll see you soon in a new video.